today's video, we are at True Rest Float Spa to see if breathing pure oxygen can make us superhuman. Hey friends, we're here at True Rest Float Spa and we are going to be breathing some oxygen today. We got different scents, so you can see many different colors, so we get to choose. I like eucalyptus. I like to put eucalyptus oil in the diffuser at home and just nice and good scent relaxing in the air. But Grace is, let's go pick this clear one. I'm a little basic. I'm just gonna go with some pure oxygen. That way there's no scent. It's just me and the O2. Here's the basic idea. We're going to do a control set of exercises, breathing oxygen at the oxygen bar set of exercises, and then breathing pure oxygen from our oxygen tank and doing the set of exercises as well. We're gonna be doing push-ups, holding our breath, and running to see if breathing increased oxygen can increase our performance. All right, so we're about to go with our controls, but we got these nifty gadgets here. So this is an O2 sensor that you just put on your finger. So you can see it started. And you just slide your finger on there like that. So it's gonna tell us what the O2 is in our blood, and then it's gonna give us our minimum heart rate at the moment. So I'm at a... Well, uh, I've got to admit, a lot of people are fucking mad, aren't they? When you think about it, that, you know, what, what oh, these yeah. guys are doing is just literal yeah. madness. Yeah. Absolute literal, literal madness. They've even got devices called oximeters. They think are going to measure the amount of oxygen that's in their blood, but it's wrong. Mm. It only measures how much infrared light can pass through their finger tip. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between oxygen in the blood and how much light can pass through the blood, infrared light. Well, pass through the fingertip. Pass through the fingertip, absolutely, of course. You know, it's just fucking mad what these people think, Yeah. you know, to be true. You yeah. know, just, it's, you know. Well, but does oxygen, does pure oxygen make you a better athlete? Well, Let's I don't find out. Well, I don't think we need to, do we? <laughs> uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be... Stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people uh, with our views and opinions because... Because, 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 because... A lot of people dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Yeah, and it's Boxing Day today. <laughs> yeah, we've got to box some globies. Absolutely. We're and, some, uh, and some science science believers. Insane people. Some f science followers. Some deluded people. Psychotic people. people, yeah. There's a lot of them about, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. Hoyner. Hoyner's I watched one. the uh, I watched the King's speech yesterday. The King's Christmas speech, Charles's first ever uh, Christmas speech as King, and I'm thinking, oh, it sounds it sounds wonderful. Very poignant words he uses. Got gets gets a nice message across to the public. But then, you know, on second second thoughts and recollect after some recollection, begin to realise that it's total rubbish. For the simple reason is that he's in the speech, he's kind of like saying, let's give some consideration for the people who give up their time for others. Yeah. And yet I'm thinking to myself, well, why isn't that reflected in the pay? Mm. Why is it people who um, can flog cars, pieces of metal, why is it they can earn much more money than the, than people who give up their time whether it's in a job or not in a job, to even care for the most vulnerable of people in our society. It's mad, isn't it? That's Absolute cause, madness. That's because the society doesn't place value in people. Mm. Places value in things. So, absolutely. So let's just consider those who help others, give up, who give up their time and help others just on Christmas Day. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Just on Christmas Day, yeah. you know. Uh, but it's you know it's total total bullshit. So I've begun I've begun to realise well I've begun to think that the the royal family and what they stand for is a joke. Yeah, it's just a joke because their values aren't uh, passed down to the people. 
Absolutely, the pe- the pe- the people aren't aren't taken into account at all. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, mm. really. Anyway, come on. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But uh, yeah, so what what have we got for everyone's displeasure on this festive occasion? Well, on this festive Peter. on this festive occasion, well, for for these people who celebrate it, we're going to have a look. We're going to sh- explain to people uh, how carbon fiber gets t- is black. Absolutely, how it becomes Com- carbon black. fiber. Yeah. How it becomes. Where it get, yeah, where it gets its name from? Where it gets its carbon from? from. Yeah, basically, because it's all a misconception. Absolutely, of there's all these people who think that in every human body is is made of carbon. Oh, all living things are made of carbon, carbon. but it's and absolute rubbish. It's total bullshit. So we're going to have a look at that. We're going to have a look at a, a, a document by Richard Kerwin. For those who aren't familiar with Richard Kerwin, he was a phlogistonist. Uh, Phlogistonist. Yeah, he he proposed the phlogiston theory in the 1700s. He was a and proponent he, of the phlogiston yeah. theory, and he he wrote a, an essay on the constitution of acids and phlogiston. Mm. So we're going to have a look at that because there's some important uh, bits of information he he um, wrote about. So we're going to have a look at that. We're going to show people some more uh, steel wall and acid acetic acid. Uh, Air stroke re- oxygen re- reactions. Reactions. <laughs> We're going to show some people some of those. We're going to have a look at this. In our opinion, there's no oxygen in the air, and, and some, some people, people are just plain stupid, stupid to, to think, think there, there is. Because we, 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 you know, we, we, we've come to realise that a lot of people, that they, they, they are stupid. They yeah. literally are stupid yeah. and cannot, um, cannot think for themselves and even think rationally and reasonably into some kind of real world existence yes, yeah so we'll never look at this and also thanks to rosman we're going to tie in some information about oxygen oxygen and going up everest absolutely of course everest absolutely of course because according to these guys at tkor there's oxygen in the air, yeah, absolutely, you know, yeah, and a lot yeah. of people think that we need oxygen to breathe yeah. and to live. Without oxygen, we cannot live. And we're also going to have a look at the Sabat- Sabat- Sabatier, Sabatier reaction. reaction. Yeah, of course, yeah, uh, because there's a bit of nonsense surrounding. Someone asked us, "Oh, now, 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 to yeah. wow, it's shit. Wow, it's shit. Absolutely, of course, yes, to cover the Sabatier reaction." Yeah, absolutely, of course. So we're going to have a little look at that and show how pointless it really is. Mm. And uh, I think that will that'll do for uh, for everyone's displeasure for Christmas time. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to knock out a few people. As it on Boxing Day, day. Yeah, of course. Sure, yeah. So what should we do first then, Peter? Well, we may, <laughs> we may as well have a look at um, Richard Kerwin. Let's have Let's a, look have at a little look Kerwin. at Richard Kerwin. Yes, Richard very Kerwin. nice man, Richard, Richard Kerwin. Kerwin. Absolutely, yes. He is a very nice man. Let's just get rid of that if I now, can. Now, he wrote this book, or he wrote this essay in the 1700s. Constitution of Acids by no, Richard Sherman. if you Sherman. scroll up a bit more. No, scroll, no, scroll down. An essay on phlogiston. Oh, there. And, and the, the Constitution, Constitution of Acids. Acids. Okay, sorry. I'm with you now. So, where am I going? So, let's have a look at page six. Page six, two... Let's just go down. Oh, five, five. Here Intro- we go. Introduction. Here we go. Page six. six of metals. Here we go. So just scroll up, just onto the previous page. Here we go. So hold on. Right there. However, I was going to go. Yeah, introduction. Start of the. However, end. in adopting this explanation, Mister Lavoisier, he's talking about Antoine Lavoisier, that French magician. Oh, it looks better though. Departs from those laws of philosophic reasoning with the breach of which he pre- before reproached his opponents. Right. So in other words, he's more or less, what he's, he's challenging his opponents, he's actually using the same kind of tactic on himself. Mm. That water is a compound substance that has been proved by direct experiment. Yeah. But that it is decomposed in any chemical operation is a mere gratuitous supposition. supposition. Nor can he say that it is an equal chance whether the inflammable air, the phlogiston or the the hydrogen, hydrogen, extricated during the solution 
of a metal proceeds from the decomposition of water or from the decomposition of the metal? Yeah, and that that is basically a very good question that still hasn't been answered to this very day yeah, yeah. in chemistry, in mainstream science. I mean, we've been talking to uh, to, to a number of people uh, about the well over the over the years. We've spoken to a lot of people over the years about the process of electrolysis and whether the water is being split or is it the case that the gases come from not the water being split but from the decomposition of the metal electrodes and all the electrolytes. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is the thing. No one's got the answers because yeah. science hasn't got the answers. Yeah. Page 27. Hasn't got it. So Kerman <laughs> is on, on, the, on the ball. He's on the ball. Mm. He's on the ball. Page 27. Page 27. Let's just go down Which here. might have Let's some relevance to um, page 27. Oh, I've got to go down to 10. Which might have oh. some. There we go. Here we go, page 27. This is this is interesting. Oh, there you go. There's on not the much comp- fun. Yeah, if you just scroll up to the scroll page. To- Another principle assumed by the patrons of the new theory, the oxygen principle. The oxygen theory, yeah. And which indeed is the cornerstone of their whole system, is the decomposition of water. But of which the maintainers of the old doctrine, the phlogistonists, have yet as, as, as yet received no satisfactory proof. Mm. According to Mr. Lavoisier's table, water should be decomposed by charcoal, at least in a boiling heat, which is full sufficient to communicate as much specific heat to the inflammable part of water as is necessary to its aerial form. Yet water has not been decomposed in that manner. Yeah. Whereas water and iron will produce inf- hydrogen, flammable air in the temperature of the atmosphere. Oh, iron has in its system less affinity to the oxygenous principle than charcoal has yep. to that principle. Blah, blah, blah. And evidence sign that it's not from the water, water. but from the, the iron. iron. And this is our, this is our, this supports our view as well. Yeah. And that is the hydrogen is contained within metals. Just, yeah. So if you pass what's water, steam, hot steam through an iron pipe, okay, through a hot iron pipe, you'll produce hydrogen. The reason being, the hydrogen comes from the decomposition of the iron, iron. pipe by the water. water. Mm. You know, I mean... Yeah, you know, hold on. I believe that was page 28 there. Oh, here we go. For 28, here we go. There we go. Vitriolic, vitriolic acid. Which is, this is sulfuric, sulfuric acid. acid. Here we yeah. go. Sure. What's interesting here, page 28 at the bottom, this is interesting because it ties it. No, at the bottom of page Oh, sorry. This ties in quite, uh, has relevance to our uh, steel wall acetic acid demonstrations that we're continuing to carry out. Sure. According to the new theory, this acid, considered abstractedly from the water which it always contains, consists of sulfur, which is considered as a simple substance, united to a large proportion of the oxygenous principle. In my opinion, it consists of a basis or radical principle which, when saturated with phlogiston, with hydrogen, constitutes sulphur. Bah, 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 bah. This view, scroll down, Th- that sulphur, during its conversion into vitriolic acid, unites to air of some sort or other, is evident from the quantity of air which it absorbs in whatever way that conversion is brought about. So what he's saying there is that the Sulfur, when you're making sulfuric acid, it absorbs a large amount of air. Yeah, so thus first... Large amount of air. Thus first, during combustion in respirable air, I've shown that 100 grams of sulfur absorbs 420 cubic inches of pure Pure air. air. And pure air is oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah, that's what they called oxygen at the time, pure Pure air. air. Um, Or about 143 grams, but the proportion of this pure air actually... Uh, united with a given quantity of sulfur is not easily determined because it is vitriolic air that is constantly formed. Oh, there we go. So what 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 he's basically saying there is that oxygen can be absorbed by certain substances. And we have to remember when it's... Is that... Um, yeah, yeah, that's obviously when it's heated. When it's heated, yeah. When it's heated. When a substance... Because to get your... To get your sulfuric acid, anyway, you need to 
um, heat up sulfur. In and in those days, they used to heat it up in an iron retort. Yeah, no, yeah. And then that yeah. would give you your sulfuric acid or your um, vitro- vitriolic acid. acid anyway. And this is a good example of halogenation. It's, it's an excellent thing, absolutely, of course. And we've got, we've got some examples of halogenation with the with the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, yeah, that's a great there example. Go. Page halogenation. So it's as if we've got in, we're finding information that supports our views. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, you know. So, so page what, ninety-seven. Page ninety-seven. Wait there. Thirty-five. Ninety-seven. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Long way to go. Ninety-seven. There we go. Oh, there nearly there. It's got seven pages. Oh, there. Last it. There, 97. 97 of calcination. Yeah, just scroll up to the page before. Oh, sorry there. Because I've got to remember. Oh, well, to prove, to substantiate this opinion, it's necessary to prove that a phlogiston or inflammable air or hydrogen in, in a concrete form exists in metallic bodies. Endowed? Endowed with, with their metallic splendor and peculiar coherence. So again, Kerwin is proposing... The that hydrogen, hydrogen is in the metals is contained in substances rather water, rather water, yeah, or than this, water. Yeah, this I flatter myself. I have sufficiently performed on another occasion, and uh, I have that, shown first that many metals during their solution in acids produce inflammable hydrogen. Yet other metals, yet the same metals placed in the solution of other metals in the same acids though they are dissolved, yield no hydrogen, but at the same time, and in the same proportion, the metal before dissolved and calcined is restored to its metallic lustre. From whence I inferred that the substance which added metal would, if alone, give out in the form of inflammable air, is on this occasion imbibed and absorbed by that which is restored to its metallic lustre. Yeah. Um... Oh, the metal, metallic calces. Isn't that... Um, op- oxides. Ca- oxides in yeah. dittos. Dittos, yeah. So, and secondly... Yeah. Metallic, metallic oxides are reduced to metals by merely heating them in hydrogen. In hydrogen. Which they visibly absorb. absorb. There you go. So, I mean, we've we've clearly got, um, you know, some more oh, information. we've got that demonstration. Oh, yeah, of course. There's another demonstration we've got to show to everyone, which we will find right now. Yeah, it's important. Well, yeah, what, where would I find it? Copper, copper with um, hydrogen. Heating copper in hydrogen. Oh right, okay. Hold on. Heating or reacting? Is it? Yeah, that that's that what this, this right here. Copper, copper two, copper two oxide. oxide. Here we go. So this is uh, a guy. Turn the volume off. This is a guy heating copper two oxide, reducing well, he's it. Reducing, reducing copper two oxide using hydrogen. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as we're concerned, hydrogen is a reducing agent. Yeah. All reducing agents contain hydrogen. Contain hydrogen. That's our view. Because hydrogen is is the, the reducing, reducing agent. agent. There's no other substance that can reduce materials into metals than hydrogen. Hydrogen is the only substance, in our view. So we got this. We got this uh, demo here, and this guy's got uh, a glass uh, tube there, and inside he's got some copper two oxide, and it's uh, connected to a h- hydrogen gas cylinder. Mm. Okay. So what he's going to do is going to switch on the um, hydrogen. Hydrogen, right there. Is he going to weigh anything? Because he's got scales there. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't, no I suppose you're right. So he's going to put his copper two oxide. There we go. He's going to put copper two oxide in the um, glass um, heating chamber, burning tube, tube, burning tube, whatever you want to call it. Okay, hurry up, let's go, baby. It's been a bit slow. See, let's just move it. So more. copper. So he's got it there. He's going to weigh it actually. So he's got seventeen point one three four. Oh, right, yeah. 17.14. Now, the copper two oxide should contain a bit of water, shouldn't it? Yeah. should contain a bit of water. So, there we go. And he's going to connect it up. Yes, we don't need we don't need half of this, do we? So, there's the tube, the copper two oxide, and he's connecting it up. And he's got it burning. And he's Pass- got it burning now because the hydrogen's being passed through the glass tube and he's burning the end. 
Okay, so while this is going on, he's going to start to heat the copper two oxide with a Bunsen burner from outside of the um, glass tube, burning tube. Okay, so wait there, he's going to put, he pops it there, there he is. So you can see a bit of mist there, can't you? Yeah. See which a little, little bit of condensation there, which is quite rightly to be, expect, to be expected. So he's heating it up. There we go. It's quite an interesting little demo, isn't it? Really, when well, you yeah, think about it. Yeah. So it's glowing red in um, in, because he's, he's in not, parts. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's not using it. any carbon. He, there's no carbon present at all. Because no. hy hydrogen isn't uh, doesn't con isn't a, allegedly a hydrocarbon fuel. It's just a clean bur clean burning fuel. <laughs> So there's no carbon present in the uh, in the demo at all, as opposed if you wanted to make copper in the old old yeah. fa old fashioned it's, it's ways, you'd use charcoal or a carbon source and copper. Yeah. You'd use carbon as your reducing. Yeah, what's the um, time? No, you can't use carbon as your reducing agent. You'd have to use coal or a fuel that contains hydrogen yeah. as your reducing yeah. agent. But anyway. Yeah. So the copper two oxide is actually turning, it looks as if it's turning red, doesn't it? Yeah. And there you go. So he's heating it there. I'm not worried about time, but you can see he's, he's, he's doing a good job here, you know. I'll keep moving it forward. Yeah, I can move it. don't really want to. Yeah, so wait there. And what you should do, you should turn it off uh, slow. I mean, that is getting hot. Yeah, just move it forward. I'm not interested yeah, in sure. that. Yeah, sure. He's turned off the Bunsen burner, so he's had enough because obviously it's best not to turn off the hydrogen gas first. It's best to... Don't want an explosion. Absolutely. Don't want any blowback. Oh, just move it to... So there you go. He's gotten to a point where he turns off the hydrogen gas after it's cooled down. There we go. And he removes oh. the, the glass tube. Is he going to weigh it? I think he does. Yeah, he's, he's going to weigh, weigh it. Weigh it. Let's have a look. Yeah, so let's so let's weigh it. I can't remember what it was. Seventeen point one three. So it's sixteen point nine six. So it's lighter. So it's lighter. Do you know what that shows to me? Uh, it's, it's lost moisture. Well, it's it's lost weight. In other words, when it's compacted into a metal, it's lighter. It's lighter than the original parts. Oh, well, and that's why ah, oh, that's why certain oxides are heavier. That's oh, right. very good. Yeah, of course. And that's exactly what we think. Why um, the phlogiston theory, one of the criticisms arose. Yeah. Through the, anyway, come uh, on, because we, we don't want to go but, off yeah, on of a course. tangent. But um, so anyway, so that's... Uh, <laughs> so get back to... So getting back, let's just go back on that video, just just so I don't lose it, so that it's there. Oh. So, no, just so come it's there. Now, yeah. So he's, he's using hydrogen as a reducing agent to make copper metal. metal. Because in that tube, I'm sure he does. He not show you some balls of copper. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Copper metal yeah. in in there. He shows you some. Yeah, the products are copper and water. That's what oh. he said. Copper metal. So he produces copper metal. Um, so we go from there, and then what? We'll go back, back on, on Kerwin's book. Go go back on Kerwin's book. There we go. And he so, says that metal calces oxides. Copper two oxide are reduced to metals by merely heating them in hydrogen, which they visibly absorb. absorb. There you go. Okay. So there you go. So that's what Cohen's saying, and that would support our view about hydrogen being a reducing agent, agent. Yeah, because the metals yeah. actually absorb the hydrogen. There you go. One oh one. So one oh one. There was probably other things there. Really. Oh but. yeah, sure. One oh one. Here we go. Hundred and one. Here we go. Oh, detonate, amalgamate. It is true that vitriol. Oh, to prove the decomposition of water, Mr. Lavoisier made the following experiments. Uh, first, he let up a mixture of water and filings of iron into a tube filled with mercury and in a few days obtained a small quantity of inflammable air, hydrogen. Secondly, having passed the steam of boiling water through a red hot iron tube, oh, which yes. is what you were talking about earlier, yeah. he obtained a large quantity of hydrogen because that's how they used to make hydrogen to begin with yeah the inner surface so of the tube it. was calcined and had the appearance of what is called the specular or tefular iron ore tessular iron ore of great hardness 
scarcely magnetic and affording no air with acids. The iron increased in weight from 25 to 30 percent. These experiments seem to me to prove nothing more than water unites with, with the iron and expels inflammable <coughs> air from, from it, which now, is further confirmed by the following considerations. So again, it's more information, according to Kerwin, that the water decomposes the iron tube and the hydrogen is released from the iron. From the iron, absolutely, of course. And it, it you want, you're not splitting water. You're not splitting water at all. To get to get your hydrogen. So the hydrogen, um, you know, whenever we look at um, how hydrogen is produced, hydrogen is always coming from, originating from the materials that water is being used to decompose those materials. Yeah, anyway, come on. <coughs> what next? 106. You mean say there's more? Well, there's only two more. 106. There we go. There you go. 106. Um, well, on this experiment, I remark first that Mr. Lavoisier supposes that the inflammable air and fixed air produced were free from water, a supposition which neither Mr. Sofer's experiments nor my own can allow. Yeah, and if we suppose that above half the weight of these airs was water, a supposition fully justified by my experience, there will be no necessity for inferring that water, water was decomposed, decomposed but only the charcoal, charcoal, which was resolved in great measure into its constituent principles, hydrogen, hydrogen and, and carbon, well, carbon dioxide. Oxide, yeah. Sure. Well, you could actually argue carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, of course, yeah. Or oh, well, oh, well, yeah, because then even this resolution is not quite perfect. The inflammable air being still combined with a quantity of fixed air, carbon monoxide, oh. as appeared by its weight and its burning with a blue, blue flame. flame. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, carbon monoxide will burn with a blue flame. A go. very distinct blue flame. 145 is the last one. There you go. 145. There we go. So, you know, uh, 140... Wait there, let's just go 43, Three, nearly there, 145. 100. Conclusion here. There we go. Oh, look. Therefore, when we see inflammable air, oh, to the proofs I have here to, here to for given that inflammable are the same substance, inflammable air and are the same, same substance, yeah. just as ice and the vapour of water are called the same substance. No objection of any weight has since been made. Oh, what was that up there? Yeah. Therefore... Well, when we see inflammable air proceed from the solution of metals or by passing the steam of water through them or through sulphur, it's much more reasonable to infer that it proceeds from the metals and sulphur than from the decomposition of water, of which we have not a single undoubted instance. instance. As it, of course, I mean, you know, we, we discussed uh, um, hydrogen coming from materials and water not being split, you know, in on, the right. electrolysis process and in other instances with lots and lots of people, don't we? And yet they, we're still here and we still have, we haven't withdrawn any of our videos at all. I know, yeah. And no one's been able to actually provide us with any kind of information that shows that we're wrong. Yeah, well, even Richard Kerwin's, this was written in, I don't know, in the 1700s. This yeah. still stands. They're absolutely, yeah, I know. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, let's yeah. have a little look. You know, we've got, um, yeah, this was written in, uh, wait, there, let's, does it give a date? Yeah, yeah. Can you read that one? Look at that. LXXX 70, 30, 87. 80, 1787. 1787, this was written. And you think it still holds true now? Yeah, you know, I mean, how ridiculous is this? I think that's seventeen eighty-seven. Anyway, I think you're probably right. Yeah. Anyway, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Seventeen. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, M one thousand five hundred two hundred seventeen hundred and seventy-seven. Yeah, seventeen hundred and seventy-seven. You know, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? Come yeah. on, click that one off. Anyway, so let's, thanks, Richard, for that one. Yeah, thanks, Richard, for that one. Yeah. That's fine. So, He's what's best next, mate then, is. Peter? What should we do now, then? Well, let's go and show our um, uh, steel wall. Our steel wall, because we can tie in that bit about the when that video with the copper two oxide in that it had it had lost weight. Steel wall. I've got to think now. Here we go. So, do we need to? Well, show this is what we did. Uh, this was our second demonstration. Yeah, because 
We did a first demonstration. We got two bits of wire wall, soaked them in a scent vinegar, and then dropped each piece into a jar. We filled one jar with oxygen gas, and we stuck a balloon skin over the top, top of each yeah. jar and just left them. And um, after that one, we thought we'd do it again. Yep. Okay. And only in a very slightly different manner, and that is we weighed the wire wall before they went into the jar. And that's something we did um, do. Yeah, that's something we did. That's, but we didn't do that the first time around. We didn't do that first time around. However, but what we also did was that we rang out the wire wall more. In this in this demonstration, yes, because um, we did find that it, it uh, we didn't get the same results as we did in our initial um, absolutely uh, demonstration. So anyway, so, so we've got uh, the wire wall being squelched into. Uh, I'm just going to get the wait there. I'm just going to get. I want to get the. Uh, how do you get the? Uh, oh, you you can. Uh, oh, there, I've got it now. So we've. Um, Squee wringing out the uh, the wire wall, getting it as free from moisture as possible, and, and this is acid. something we didn't do first time around. Yeah, we just basically we didn't do it very well. We left quite yeah. a lot of moisture in the in the wire wall, so we've wrung it out quite well. So we've got two little balls. So there's our first little ball. There's our second little ball. And remember, acetic acids five. It's about, I think it's about five percent um, acetic acid, and the rest of it's water. Yeah. We it's do, not very uh, strong acid. And we have weighed these. Yeah, we weighed these uh, balls. No, we have weighed them. Yeah, we have weighed them on the scales, but we weigh them before they go into the jar, though, don't we? Yeah. So let's just move this along. We've got to show this because it's quite interesting, I suppose. There we go. Come on. Yeah, short. So there's our first ball. It goes on the scales, and we've got nine... nine. Nine, nine grams, okay, for that one. That gets popped in one jar, in the air jar. Pop. And that's it. And the other one is, here we 9. go. 9.08. 9.08, it certainly is. That's it. We do actually write the weights of the wire wall there you go. on the masking tape that's stuck yeah. to the You shouldn't really uh, have thrown, dropped it in because of some of the moisture might have. Doesn't matter. Oh, pff, don't so, know, but never mind. And there we go. We're going to fill up, uh, oh, we're going to fill up one jar with oxygen gas from our oxygen concentrator, oh. or from our oh, we're going dry to fill air up. concentrator. We're fill our air, our air concentrator. We're going to fill up with concentrated dry air. That's right. Yeah, aka oxygen. oxygen. So there's. I uh, oh, know. Oh, oh, yeah. Because oh. we 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 were going to put. Uh, oh, we've shown this video. Yeah, we've shown this video, haven't we? Yeah, we were going to put, we did stop, we did actually think about putting a condom over the top. Just but to, it didn't work very well. But it well. didn't work very well at all. So we, we took it off and cleaned up the jar and just put a balloon skin over it. Yeah. Yeah, we did show this in our last video. I remember that. So there's our first uh, balloon. We're there. there we we're go. there. There we go. And we'll just show everyone what we did. And there's our other one after filling up with oxygen, okay? Oxygen gas. So that's what we did. Oh, yeah. So we left those for a week. week. Okay, left them for a week. And this is what we had, I think. Oh, look at this. This mm. is what we had over, I can't remember when this, when we, probably three or four days, four days, I'd three, say. Three, four days, something like that. Yeah. The balloon did actually pop. The blue, yeah. balloon skin did pop. pop. Yeah did burst so we had to fill it we refilled the jar with oxygen and then covered it back over with a yeah. with a, a new skin so maybe if we'd have used a condom probably would have been a lot better well oh, I, don't, I don't know I think yeah I flexible. think this was about halfway through because the yeah but you can certainly see the amount of condensation yeah, in now. the left jar as opposed to the right jar yeah. and you can clearly tell that the blue balloon skins been sucked down yeah, into the that. jar wow. more Oof. so than now the a lot, green one. Now a lot of people will say, "There you go, it's reacting with the oxygen." Yeah, there you go. A lot of people would instantly say, "There you go, you've got proof there that it's reacting with the, the oxygen." oxygen. Yeah. You've got oxygen in one jar, 
pair in the other jar, which has 21%. Which has oxygen. allegedly, yeah, which was, which has got 21% oxygen in oh. it. And you can see that the jar and the rust occurs because it reacts, the steel reacts with the oxygen in the air yeah, yeah. or oxygen. So we can, that's a clear um, evidence to support their view. Well, well, not really, because it still well, doesn't prove there's oxygen in the air. Well, the, yeah, but we've put oxygen in the jar with the blue balloon skin over okay, it. Okay, all right then. We've actually placed oxygen okay, in it. But we've also placed other things in the jar. Yeah, we've placed acid in there. We've placed an acid in the jar. Absolutely, of course, yeah, because that's another variable that can affect the results. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to Kerwin. Yeah. When he said about how sulfur, sulfuric acid, vitriolic acid well, absorbs, absorbs a ox- lot of oxygen. oxygen. Absolutely, of course. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. See, yeah, you can't, you can't get away from it, really. That you, you can't know. prove oxygen is a constituent of the air. Absolutely, on, you on, can't prove it. You can't. In the right. You can't demonstrate it to be the case. And you, you can't demonstrate it that in this jar, the oxygen is reacting with the steel. Yeah. Okay. How can you determine that the oxygen gas in the left-hand jar is reacting with the steel wall and not the acid? And not the acid. And, the, and the, it's not the acid that's, being, that's absorbing the oxygen. oxygen gas. Yeah. The acid. Yeah. Yeah. The acid. Because oxygen has an affinity with acids. Well, here we go. Oxygen means acid former. Oh, oxygen. Oxygen. Acid. This is why Lavoisier called it oxygen, because it's an acid former. So oxygen has an affinity to acids. Mm. So anyway, anyway, according to the oxygen principle, the the steel wall in the left-hand jar should weigh more than the steel wall in the right hand jar. Yeah, sure, because the as, as the oxygen is meant to absorb into the steel wall and react with it to form iron oxide. Which and it's it clear heavier. it's clear from this demonstration that there's more oxygen reacting with the steel wall in the left hand jar. Absolutely. So should we find out what weighs what? Yeah, come on then. Here we go. So and don't forget when we weighed them, they were only point zero eight of a difference. Yeah, so we've got the jar here. We're using different scales, but I don't think that should make any difference, difference. whatsoever. Yeah. See here, we've still got the moisture in the oxygen jar. The moisture's on the side of the jar. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And we put, uh, like what I said, the balloon did burst. The balloon skin did burst. We yeah, put, so we, we put a new balloon. Well, filled it up. We with refilled it with oxygen, oxygen and um, put a new balloon over Put top. a new balloon, balloon skin over the top. So there's there our wire wall. From the oxygen jar. We're going to weigh that. And we get a weight of 8.67. Sorry, 8.467. Missed out the four there. Mm. Now, we've had a reduction in weight. Oh, right, yeah, we have. We've we've had a reduction reduction in weight. weight. I've forgotten whether it was 9 or 9.08. It was on the jar. Or 9.8. That was 9.08, that was. Yeah, that was 9.08, but we've had a reduction in weight. Mm. Mm. Well, there could have been the moisture because it's pushed the moisture out. But it's lost moisture. Yeah. It's lost a lot of moisture. Whereas the air jar is oh, dry. Not, well, when we look at the air jar, it is dry, dry. Which seems to be a common feature. Yeah. Seems to be a common, common feature, feature in these little demonstrations. So I'm trying my hardest to get this balloon off. So my guess is that this, there you go, this steel wall, what should this steel wool be? Should it be lighter well, it should, or should it be it heavier? Should be, it should be less. Should be lighter. Should be lighter. Even yeah. lighter. So yeah. let's have a little butchers. Let's see what it's what it's uh, what it weighs, and we get eight point seven two nine. nine. It's more, which is more. What was the other one? I can't remember. Eight point four. Was it eight point four? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That was that was that was me, wasn't it? That's the wrong video. Oh right. Oh sorry. Yeah, miles away. There we go, 8.4, there we go. go. Oh, this is the first one. This is the one in oxygen, 8.467, that's the one. Yeah, sure. 
And the other one was 8.7. And the other one was 8.7. There's the one in air. There we go. We're just taking it off. So we're back. So the one in air clearly weighs more. So there we go. Whereas That's it shouldn't good. weigh more. It should weigh... The one in air should weigh less. Less. Because there's, because there's less allegedly oxygen, less oxygen, oxygen to react with the steel, steel wall. wall. Yeah. Or the steel. Yeah. So this, this one clearly weighs more. Um, as yeah. we can see, we've got... 8.729 yeah so it weighs more yeah but it would weigh more because it's absorbed the moisture it's absorbed the moisture which can which if we were to give a prediction it would have hold true yeah the yeah. one in there would weigh more weigh more because it contains more moisture yeah. it's yeah. absorbed more moisture, moisture from the from the air yeah. Whereas the one in the oxygen will not have uh, yeah, will right. not weigh 0. more 6, oh. because it hasn't absorbed that moisture. So you've got 0. 0.2 to 0. 0.24 of a gram. Sure. I mean, there's not much in it, but there's still a difference. There's still a difference. Be there's still a difference, difference that yeah. we we think we would be able to replicate. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. You know, if we were to carry out the same demonstration, so anyway, again, let's just move um, it forward. Then. We'd always find um, the um, the wire wool in air should weigh more than the wire wool in yeah. oxygen. Okay, so let's move forward. So we've done this one. So we've done that one. So there's there you the, go. There's look, the two. look at the difference in the wire wool. Look at the one in air is on the right, and the one in the oxygen is on the left. Yeah, and the one in air just looks black. Yeah, because the carbon's been has come to the to the forefront of the yeah we yeah we are actually substance. seeing a, a, there is a, there is a difference in the reaction yeah to the steel wall yeah there is a difference you can clearly see that you yeah. know anyway but science doesn't do this kind of stuff it doesn't go into it in in depth it right, just anyway. says it rusts and so that's, anyway. that's all so let's have a look at now what we've done now so let's have a look at what we've done now so we're using the same jars we've got uh, two bits of wire wool now this time we're not going to use any acid. We're not going to use acid. We are going to do it, but uh, take out acid as being a variable within yeah. the demonstration. Yeah, because we think is that the the oxygen gas in the previous video, the oxygen gas in in the left hand jar, was been absorbed into the acid. Sure. <laughs> Excuse me. There we go. So we get we've weighed the steel wall before being soaked into in water water yeah. from the tap yeah it's nothing special and um, there we go and now what we're going to do is we are going yeah, to gonna ring it out we're going to ring it out a little bit there you go let's move this along wait there let's, oh. oh i knew that was going to happen do you know that oh just move it along yeah i can't I want to do it using the arrow. Come, we've got loads to get through. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I've got plenty. We got it's Boxing Day. Everyone's on holiday. Not the point. There we go. So we're weighing one one piece of uh, wetted wire wool, and That's we've got eleven point four two four two six four two five four two three. There you go. Four two four. Yeah. Eleven four two four. Yeah. Eleven point four two four. There we go. That one's going into the. Um, oxygen jar and we've and this is the other one and this is going into the this is going into the air jar and it's 11.330 329 328 just move it yeah forward. it's fine yeah i've got to get up the uh, there we go so that's going into the air jar so what we do obviously you can probably guess yeah we're going to fill up the uh cons the the oxygen jar with oxygen and the air jar, we're going to uh, put a balloon skin over the top, top, which is there. Yeah. And we're going to do the same with the oxygen once it's there. So we're just showing everyone that we've got oxygen in there. That's it. Great, real light's glowing splint. And what we're going to do, we're just going to pop, pop a balloon skin over the top. top. Here we, we go. go. Over it goes. So there you have it. And... Got a lovely picture in my hand there. Wait there, let's yeah. just can't zip it across. There, there we go. go, all done. So we've got the two jars. We've got the two jars, one filled with oxygen, one filled with air, and both wire wool just been wetted with yeah. 
water from the tap. Yeah. Okay. And we'll see what happens with this. Yeah. And uh, that's it, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens with this. But in in what what I think would happen in this is that you... What I think will happen in this is that you won't see... Well, I mean, we could actually say what's what we've seen so far, and that is we've seen a depression, slight depression in the air, in the jar with air in it. And we've seen rust form... On both in both jars, yeah, but we're not we're not seeing any kind of um, um, compression, compression or depression in the balloon skin, or that much. We're not seeing that much yeah. at all, which which <clears throat> indicates to me that it's the acid. Yeah, that does indicate the acid does make a huge it's difference different. in. Um, in the, what, the observation in the obs or what happens in the in the demo yeah basically yeah yeah sure yeah. now some of some people might disagree and say well the, that's because you still walls covered in oil got oil on oh, it, on oh, it yeah. and all this yeah. stuff I mean, no but we st know. we're seeing rust but we're still seeing rust even in we're the, seeing the rust form the, we're seeing rust form even in the, uh, just soaking it in water so, yeah you know and then popping them in the jars you know we're still seeing rust form yeah. <sighs> Yeah. So anyway, but so we'll 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 come back with that one Callum. for uh, for next time. Callum. So to in conclusion for what we've done so far, we since we we I that's it on the video, isn't I it? I seriously consider that the oxygen is reacting with the acid yeah. and not the steel wall. Yeah, I I, I would prob I would agree with that. Yeah, I think it's quite but anyway quite reasonable to to suggest. Yeah. That 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 uh, on the other video, what other with video? the balloon that's got this one here. This one. The, the reason why we're seeing this is because the the air, because oxygen oxygen is just concentrated dry air. The air is being absorbed by the acid, acid. not yeah. the steel, steel wall. wall. Yeah, sure. That's that's our view. Yeah, yeah. basically. So you know, there we go. But we've got to do more anyway on that. Sure. So let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at the Sabatier. No, oh, the Sabatier process. And this is uh, uh, wow! It's shit. Wow! Um, it's shit. Of course. Here we go. He's absolutely right, isn't it? Absolutely. We just go on uh, Sabatier reaction. Sabatier reaction. Here we go. Now th this was a uh, was he a French guy? Was it yeah, Jean French. Paul Sabatier and Jean Baptiste Sandarens? French chemists. Sure. Now you come up with a, uh, the Sabatier reaction or Sabatier process produces methane and water from a reaction of hydrogen with carbon dioxide at elevated temperatures and pressures in the presence of a nickel catalyst. It was discovered by the French chemist Paul Sabatier and Jean-Baptiste Sendelens in 1897. Optionally, ruthenium on alumina makes a more efficient catalyst. It is described by the following exothermic reaction. CO2 plus 4H2 um, goes to CH4 plus 2H2O, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There is disagreement on whether the CO2 methylation yeah, occurs by first associatively absorbing an adatom. It's just amazing. Forming oxygen it's amazing what they come up with. Hydrogenation. Sure. What they come up with there... <sighs> they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to figure out where the water comes from because oh. there's no water to begin with oh right yeah oh where does the water where's come the, where's the water come from to begin with well it's got to come it's got to migrate along with the hydrogen hasn't it well in our view yes it would migrate along with the hydrogen because you need water to produce hydrogen gas it's as simple yeah. as that yeah and we know that water can exist as a gas yeah. Water can. Because it, it, they, they normally uh, steam reform natural gas to strip the natural gas of its impurities to leave hydrogen and the steam is conveyed within that and because they heat it uh, over 800, 800 degrees. Oh, it's, yeah, it's about 900,000 degrees centigrade. Yeah. Because the temperature is so high, it's above the critical temperature of water. water the water means can't revert back to... Uh, a liquid, a liquid. It's got to be remaining. If it's if the pressure's maintained, it's kept in um, 
captures uh, it captures the, the gas. gaseous state. Yeah, capturing gaseous state. Yeah, sure. And it carries the the water. It carries. Yeah, the water. You could call water in the pipe along mm. in the pipe. It's the water. It's the water is the energy carrier. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, you could call water as being an energy carrier. carrier. But I mean, it makes total sense to view uh, that the water here in this reaction is produced because it's present with the hydrogen. Yeah, but it's in gaseous form. It just condenses after the reaction, you know, to to become liquid water. Mm. Um, that's mm. all. But um, anyway, but the point of it is just a waste of time. Yeah, we think this is a total waste of time. Um, Creation of synthetic natural gas because they're they're they're, they're looking at doing this for uh, carbon capture you know oh we can capture the carbon that's in the air yeah we can capture co2 can, in the air and we can mix the carbon with hydrogen, hydrogen. and use it as a fuel and but, then produce me- methane but you're still going to produce co2 when you burn the methane, methane. i know this is this is why it's just crazy it's it's a ludicrous ludicrous kind of um uh, yeah it's uh it's a it's a uh, what's the word it's just uh <laughs> It's just a load it's of great. bollocks. And you can it's tell. Absolutely, of course. You can tell it's all rubbish because they all talk about International <sighs> Space Station. Life oh, I mean, this is, this is even they worse. Also, they also talk about uh, life on Mars, manufacturing propellant on Mars. Yeah. Using the Sabatier reaction has been proposed as a key step in reducing the cost of human mission to Mars. Right, okay. Hydrogen is combined with CO2 from the atmosphere with methane. Then stored with me. Oh, hold on. Hydrogen is combined with CO2 from the atmosphere okay. with, with methane, methane. Then, then stored, stored as fuel and the water oh, okay. side product electrolyzed, yielding oxygen to be liquefied and stored as oxidizer and hydrogen to be recycled back into the reactor. The original hydrogen could be transported from Earth or separated from Martian sources of water. water. I mean, you know, th- this is the trouble. Man uses his imagination so much that he can get people to believe in anything. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Anything. Anything's possible yeah, know, yeah, with man yeah. because it's all in his imagination. Whereas we know it's just a waste of time. And the thing is... To is, be applying this to try and conserve the, the Earth. And all these people, you know, all, these, all these space fanatics, think that you only need... Hydrogen is water-free. So you only need to mix that with CO2. Yeah, sure. And burn it, and you can produce water. Yeah, I mean the the thing is, what's the point? What's the point of everyone currently going for green hydrogen, producing green hydrogen, which means you won't get any kind of um, pollution when you combust hydrogen? Okay, okay, and yet what they're doing in the Sabatier process, and then they in the Sabatier process, they're promoting it because they can use the CO two in the atmosphere. To then make methane a fuel, but when you burn that fuel, you'll produce CO two. Yeah. So it's a no brainer. That's the yeah. that's the yeah, phrase I was no looking brainer. for. It's a no brainer. I mean, then, it's just a waste of time. Come on, let's go on how sure. carbon fiber is made. So, Here we go. Now this one you'll actually like yeah, because, because it's one, good. Well, one thing that we've always thought about, and that is, how does carbon fiber is why is it black? Why is it black? Why is it black? Absolutely, of course, yeah. And you've got to think about carbon fiber is a product. Man has to sell products so it kind of glosses them to be all these wonderful things. Well, one of the things with carbon, carbon is is has got very strong properties. Carbon, carbon fiber, very strong, durable, sure, light as well. Yeah. But how do, how does it how how can you actually make carbon? Because in our understanding, well, yeah. carbon is a result of a process. You have yeah. to burn something yeah. or combust something or combust something to produce your carbon. carbon. And you without, don't you don't get carbon to begin with. Yeah, there's no. I mean, our bodies, for example, don't contain carbon at all. All living things do not contain yeah, carbon. We don't, Coal doesn't contain carbon. We don't exhale. Wood doesn't contain carbon. Yeah, we don't exhale carbon dioxide because we don't burn anything in our bodies to, to, to produce carbon to produce carbon absolutely of course so so when you look at carbon fiber a lot you know we, we've specifically got to find a source of combustion in order to find where the carbon fiber 
actually comes about or how it actually comes about yeah and in this video and we found it we found it yeah so how is carbon fiber made the science lesson you always dreamed of or wouldn't ask? well basically all they do is get a polymer a plastic they get a polymer let's we can watch it from um could we watch, watch it, it from the carrier bag watch it from the carrier but let's watch it from the carrier yeah. bag because yeah. this guy thinks that there's carbon in the carrier bag, yeah, yeah, and no, yet there yeah. isn't. There's only yeah. carbon in the carrier bag when you burn mm. it. Yeah, you know it's just nuts, isn't it? Yeah. So let's just let's listen this... to him from from the carrier bag. Yeah. There you go. So are we listening? Demonstrate how important it is. I've got a really expensive prop. Check this out. Going back to my favourite conger analogy. What happens is you get multiple conga lines and get them to line up next to each other parallel. You then get them to join hands, cross-linking those lines together, and this makes it really, really strong. Why is this important? Well, this is a carrier bag. It's made from carbon, much like carbon fibre, but it's made from polyethylene, and it doesn't have that cross-linking going on. And as a result, it's strong in one direction, but it'll tear in another by cross-linking the fibres. It increases the fibre density and makes it strong. The next part of the process is called carbonisation. And what they do is take the strands of carbon fibre and then put them in special ovens that heat them to 1,000 degrees Celsius or more. And this is done without the presence of oxygen. This is to stop the fibres from burning. The high heat and lack of oxygen causes the carbon strands to vibrate and some of the chemical bonds to non-carbon atoms start to break, releasing those non-carbon atoms. And this yeah, all, all that's part of the imagination, but you know, the main thing is, is that he's clearly detailing a process where the product becomes carbonised. Yeah, we even calls it carbonisation. So it's called carbonisation. Mm -hmm. And it's due to heat, the material being heated at very high temperatures yeah. without the, the presence of air. Yeah. It's, it's Stroke no, or oxygen. It's no different to bone char. It's no different to charcoal, making charcoal. It's absolutely, of course, yeah. But And that, that's how the product right at the end is called carbon fibre. Yeah. yeah. Because they carbonise it. Yeah. And that's how they make carbon fibre. No, it's not carbon fibre before this process. Absolutely, of course. It's just no, a polymer. It's, it's just a polymer. Polymer, ac acrylonitrile yeah. polymer or something. Acrylonitrile. Acry oh, polyacrylonitrile. That's what it is. That's all it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know. So anyway, so, yeah, anyway, thought, so if, well, you, if, you, if you always look, if you look for carbon fibre of any or carbon, always you should always be looking for a carbonisation process, process. Mm. to produce that carbon. carbon. Yeah, and always be looking for heat. There you go. Come on. So we we were on our uh, main topic then. So our main topic. Here we go. Now you'll like this one because this <coughs> one's quite. I've got a fine. Where's that from now? Oh, right. Yeah. There you go. In our opinion, there's no oxygen in the air. And right. some people are just plain stupid to think there is. is. Absolutely. Because a lot of people we we speak to think that it doesn't matter what you tell them, they'll mm. they'll think that science is correct. Yeah. And there is oxygen in the air. Twenty one percent oxygen in the air. Yeah. We were talking to somebody, we were discussing this with somebody the other day. Well Hoyner. Hoyner, Mr. Hoyner. And yeah. he says he comes up with this statement and says science cannot provide proof of anything, which I totally agree. Yeah. And then I ask myself, why are you then saying that oxygen is a constituent of the air and water is H2O? Yeah. If science doesn't do proof. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. the, the conversation was that he, he was saying that I've done electrolysis and we've determined using calculations as well that water's made of hydrogen oxygen. So we're like saying to him, well, okay then, tell you what we'll do. Because it was like 100 comments long and we're like saying to him, okay, uh, do us a video of your demonstration, what exactly what you do, and if we can't critique it, We'll take all our videos down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, we and are... His, and what was his response? Uh, no, no, thanks. No. Yeah, I mean, we're, okay. we're prepared Bye. to take any of our... Withdraw any of our videos if somebody comes along and can demonstrate that we are wrong. Yeah, but he can't. 
in our you know our, that our opinions are wrong. If if somebody does demonstrate that, then I'm prepared to take all, all any related video down. Yeah, you know. But uh, anyway, but uh, we've got uh, in this little bit, we've got uh, TKOR. Yeah, I forgot who gave us the link now. Who gave us the uh, oh dumb dumb dummy dumb dummy num nummy nummy num. Nummy Num. Nummy Num gave us uh, a link to this video. Just asked us to have a little coverage, do a coverage of the yeah. of this video, and we've got um, we've got it here. Oh, uh, sorry, I was going to mention about the the that carbonisation process. If we just quickly go back to that carbon fibre there, this uh, carbonisation process is very similar to our understanding calogenation, which ties into the copper. Exactly the same with the copper two oxide yeah. reduction. In other words, in that the substance you're heating up is absorbing, absorbing the, the external air, the air. external air, air, whatever that may be. Whether that's hydrogen, whether that's nitrogen, nitrogen whether, whether that's, that's oxygen, oxygen whether argon, that's any whatever, whatever it is. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, I mean calogenation. This is that that is our term for it, for the process where a material, when heated, will absorb the surrounding air. Because it okay. expands, is 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 a pro is a is really a, a process that it nobody science doesn't cover. Yeah, I know it should actually be recognised. It should actually we, be recognised as a real process within uh, manufacturing, within technology, within science. But yeah. it's but it's yeah. not. The oh, Peat oh, and yeah. Peat process. What about that one? Oh no, you can't call it the Peat and Peat process. I think anyway. calogenation is brilliant. Yeah, anyway, let's I get back brilliant. to uh, does pure oxygen make you? A, a better, better athlete. athlete. Does it make you stronger, faster, better? Absolutely, of course. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nummy Num, for this one. Um, just pure oxygen. And uh, in this video, we test if pure oxygen can make us run faster, hold our breath for longer, do more push-ups, and do more bicep curls. Mm. Will it make us better athletes? Well, of course, it doesn't, because straight away you're going to think. Well, I don't see anyone in the Olympic Stadium breathing in oxygen. Oh, I don't see any footballers at the World Cup at extra time. Oh, right, yeah. Breathing I mean, in any oxygen. You yeah, know. I'm trying to think mm. who was in the final. Argentina, I didn't see any Argentinians and um, oh, wow, yeah. um, f French players yeah. breathing pure oxygen, oxygen. No. just before no. the extra time kickoff. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Of course. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know. You know, you'll know what the answer is. You know. Does it make you a better athlete? No. No. No, of course. So we'll just click off the uh, the digit. So they do a bit of um they do a bit of everything. And uh, they do a bit of running. They hold their breath. You yeah. know, or play a little bit, I suppose. I, I think that what they're doing there, I don't know. They're holding their breath there, you know. They get yeah. the psyching themselves up, you know. Yeah. I haven't done this before. Before the uh, yeah, so they carry video. out they carry out some t a, a set of tests before, and yeah. then what they do is that they go into the guy who's flogging all this stuff because he yeah. wants your money. money. Okay, yeah. and they sit there and they breathe in oxygen gas through their nasal cannulas. Yeah. Okay. And so there's uh, no difference to that bloke who does the hydrogen, breathing in your hydrogen. Yeah, I know, yeah, it's, it's all the same. It's just madness, yeah. you know. It's just total madness. And, um, you know, they do that for 10 minutes. Yeah. And even the oximeter reading just went up one, one, one or two. two yeah. you know, it doesn't go up much, you know. But that could be because they're feeling better. Yeah. Here we go. So uh, there is the Barnet the man, yeah. man there. You know, yeah, that's the oxygen, and uh, apparently no change. It was no change. It, you know, uh, it was, it was worse. Did, it was worse. He did it worse. Now it should have been better because you right. get better at the more you do something, the better you get. Anyway, we don't really want to play all. Anyway, the video. yeah, we don't want to play the whole video, of course. But they do the rest of it, and in the in this little car park area, they actually have an, a cylinder of oxygen. They're going to inflate the balloons and actually breathe in the oxygen directly from the balloon. Now, what would be going through my mind is damaging my lungs because yeah, you know, yeah. you know, th you know, this is dangerous stuff to breathe in, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, especially if it's unsupervised. Yeah, go on, carry on, and especially if it's 
uh, pure oxygen at high concentration for long periods. Oh, no, she's got, she's going to breathe in more than he is. Sure. They should have breathed in helium. At least we would have had a laugh listening to yeah. their voices. Oh, look, there we go, look. But uh, the oximeter's gone down to... Oh, or was that before? That was before. 97 Seven. before. Do you reckon we'll see the um, oximeter... Oh, we, we get to see the oximeter reading afterwards. afterwards yeah. 98. Oh, well, it's gone up one. Gone up one. Gone up one. That could be just uh, uh, psychosomatic. But what, what's important here that is that... The mind o- over matter there. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, the oximeter is only measuring the amount of infrared light that can pass between the finger the fingertip or your earlobe or your earlobe that's all it's doing it's not measuring the amount of oxygen that's in your blood absolutely of course yeah so here he is the bionic man again <clears throat> yeah you know, um here he is and uh there you go and you know can't see did he do, did he do better 8.12 i think he did a little bit better so now, anyway but, but the thing is is that it's a total bullshit video Given that, um, you know, they're supposed to get better anyway, you know, if you do something. It's not yeah. really a scientific test. And if, when you watch the video, they don't really arrive at any firm conclusions. No. So it's more of a it's more of a, a video for the sake of watching than learning. Basically, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's just material for their channel, you know. Because obviously, King of Random, like <laughs> any other channel on YouTube... Sc- is lo- always looking for content. Always yeah. looking for content. content yeah. Well, what can we do? What can we do this week? What can we do? What can we do? Yeah. And they think, oh, there you go. Does pure oxygen make you a be- better athlete? You know. No. No. Well, Another well, of course that, it doesn't. One thing in the video that they actually mentioned was that, that they're apparently in uh, near Salt Lake City. Yeah, sure. And so they're at a high altitude. And they're actually saying that the amount of oxygen where they are yeah, yeah, is sure. less it's like seventeen percent. So, yeah, sure. Than it is at sea, sea level. level. Yeah, and they think, well, how is that possible? I thought it was just thinner. Yeah, it's the same amount wherever you go. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So you know, science has now got to explain how these, how this air molecule can exist. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, don't go over there. There's not a lot of nitrogen. Yeah. There's don't, a lot of nitrogen there. Don't yeah. go there. If you've got best breathing. go over there. There's more oxygen yeah. over there. If you've got breathing problems, don't go to salt. Don't live in Salt Lake City. Sure. Or high altitude. Sure, sure, sure. But anyway, but one of, one of the good things they did mention in the video was um, she she started talking about breathing in pure oxygen and oxygen toxicity, which is. A, a hazard of breathing in pure oxygen for too high concentration and for too long periods, of course. Right, okay. There's an, there's an interesting comment underneath. Of course, yeah, there's an, for quite an interest. We left a couple yeah. there, of Robert course. Tompkins. Robert Here we Tompkins. Go. Yeah, you, you, don't get, you don't get 10% of your energy. Oh, sorry, wait there. So you've already got to read the comments. You don't get 10% of your energy comes from oxygen. You get no energy from oxygen. It is. It's only the final electron recipient at the end of the electron transport chain. You can't make your ATP without it. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. But the energy does not actually come from O2. In short term, I could see O2 giving a slight boost to your energy just by making your metabolism more efficient. Don't forget the placebo effect for improving your performance. Yeah. And also, you've got to remember, these people know that they're doing it for a video. So, so they've got to perform better, better the second time around. They've got to, otherwise, in their mind... They've got to feel professional. Well, they want their video to work, to be a success. Absolutely. So there's expectation there as well. Yeah, it's long-term use of extra O2 could potentially cause... Well, will cause anemia. anemia. Absolutely. Your body's, your body's red blood cell production is regulated by hypoxia. Like of O2. Low, I, low O2 in the blood in the kidneys produces urethropatine, which promotes more red blood cells production. Long-term super high O2 could potentially hinder this and cause a reduction in red blood cell production. Blah, blah, he goes on, goes on, goes on, which does not... De- also remember, O2 produces free radicals called superoxide which can actually cause damage in high levels. Oh, so, you know, because when you think about it, if you've got oxygen in your blood and it's all going around your body, as someone, uh, is it that uh, Wow It's Ship uh, mentioned? 
it would your your in, your vessels your arteries would oxidize. Uh, yeah, they'd literally oxidize. Yeah, they'd well, harden. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's let's look at science. Science says that oxygen is an oxidizer. So if you're breathing in oxygen, you're oxidizing your body. body. Yeah, you're yeah. basically drying it out. Yeah, you know that that's essentially what what they mean. And if you don't believe yeah. us, then take it from take it from some people who've ascended Everest. Absolutely, of course. Oh yes, of course. If you don't believe us, yeah, take it from some people who've ascended Everest. Everest. Now you'll go. like this because this is even better than Kerwin, isn't it? Yeah, when no, you think no, about yeah. it, this is even better. This stuff. the this uh, document. Where, where did we go from the? It was some ascent of Mount Everest, page thirteen. But the title of the story of the book is called. Oh wait, there. Come on, just go up the beginning. Wait, right up to the beginning, we've got. Um, the Geographical Journal. Well, Physiological oh, difficulties, difficulties in, in the, the Ascent. Physiological difficulty in the Ascent of Mount, Mount Everest. Everest. Major R. W. G. Hingston, Hingston, IMS Medical Officer to, to the, the Expedition, Expedition of 1924. 1924. Absolutely, of course. Yes. Page 13. Oh, is that the first one? I'm sure. No, alterations. Page been, 13 you want. Oh, no. All right, then. Page 13. All oh, right. Oh, I thought there was something up there. No, they, they just talk about the problems breathing. Problems of breathing, what it does That's to you, all. whether you get pain or gastrointestinal symptoms, loss of appetite. Yeah, they're stuff actually like studying that. the human body. Absolutely. Mental effects as, as well. On climbing. Come on, page 13. Climbing Mount Everest. Uh, glacier latitude. There we go. There we go. Hey, oxygen. oxygen. There we go. To what extent does the breathing of oxygen alleviate the symptoms already described in the previous sections? Okay? Yeah. Mm. Theoretically, we should expect an enormous benefit. We know of its great value in balloon ascents, which could not be made to extreme altitudes unless oxygen was breathed. But our evidence on the subject is most unsatisfactory. Mm. Mm. The two climbers who could have told us most about it have perished on the mountain. So oh, they dear. used oxygen, and yet they perished. Perished, yeah, I know. Bruce used oxygen on his ascent to the North Col, that is, between 21,000 and 23,000 feet. He noticed, he noticed scarcely any benefit. Odell used it at the same altitude and considered that it gave no relief. Later, he used it between 25,000 and 27,000 feet. There, the oxygen seemed to relieve the breathing and diminish the tiredness of the legs. Mm. He thinks it may have helped to keep up the temperature. It, of it, the body. Of the body, yeah. Its use produced an uncomfortable drying of the throat, which necessitated frequent swallowing and expectoration. <laughs> He abandoned the oxygen at 27,000 feet and descended easily without it. It is remarkable how little benefit was obtained from the oxygen compared with the experiences of the previous exp expedition. Yeah, because it's interesting how some people think, oh, wow, isn't this really good? Whereas because it's the placebo effect. Yeah, placebo. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. Some people might think, it's just not doing anything for them. Absolutely. So it's clear from this information here that oxygen really is of no benefit at all no. when climbing Everest. Rest, no. None whatsoever. Yeah. You know. Sorry, I, I didn't write it. It's not my, you know. Yeah. It's not I think me. that was the, uh, I think that was the only, that was the only um, interesting well, thing. Interesting thing, yeah. Climbers without, uh, somewhere about the same uh, where death occurred in the balloon. Yeah, there they just convert. It's done it fainter, they could all fall asleep, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't really. Yeah, I don't want to read it yeah. now, that's for sure. But there's nothing there that says that... Um, oxygen's great for you. Ox oxygen's good for you. But it's, it, that it's great for you, yeah. I mean, like I say, I mean, um, it, it's our, our view that, you know, why, why can't people, if people who, are, who have health problems, you know, in my opinion, you know, there's no reason why they can't be given clean, fresh air. Yeah, no, yeah. You know. yeah, but you've got to remember that if you go up to... But then people aren't my patients. Yeah. They're not my hospitals. They're not my med yeah. medical system. If, They're not if my you, If you go up to the... Alterations in breathing. Most obvious of these is the difficult difficulty in breathing. 
owing into the gradual nature of our ascent, the shortness of respiration was scarcely notice, noticeable below 10,000 feet. It was definitely apparent above 14,000 feet and above 19,000 feet. It was def- uh, yeah, the slightest, feet, the slightest the exertion. exertion made breathing laboured and severe. <sighs> Absolutely, yeah, sure. When the body was at rest, even at extreme altitudes, the rate of breathing was apparently normal and as comfortable as at sea level. But the very slightest exertion, such as the tying of a boot lace, the opening of a ration box and the getting into a sleeping bag was associated with marked respiratory distress. distress. The difficulties of the ascent were thus enormously increased. The breathing was quicker rather than deeper, but it was necessary to stop at frequent intervals and take a series of long, deep breaths. This very quickly brought relief and made one ready for a further advance. Norton told me that when he found himself dropping behind, his only chance of catching up the party was by taking a number of these deep, long breaths. It was similar to that gamoff bag that they use. Yeah, yes, it's very similar, yes. Some of the we give gives a record, record of his breathing at 27,000 feet. At that altitude, you had to take 7, 8 or 10 complete respirations for every single step forward. And even at that slow rate of progress, he had to rest for a minute or two every 20 or 30 yards. At 28,000 feet, Norton, in an hour's climb, ascended only about 80 80 feet. feet. This was the highest point reached without the aid of oxygen. The strain at that altitude was certainly intense, but when we remember that the supply of oxygen is only about one-third of that available at sea level, we are surprised that men can make these strenuous efforts, and still more, that they can remain in comparative comfort when they sit down to rest. Yeah, there sure. We go. So it's it's all about breathing techniques, really, to get you up to Mount but it's, Everest. It's, but it's basically the, the rapid the breathing of cold, dry air. That's that's the main point that I really want to mention. There is that it's dry. The air is dry. There's there's very little moisture, moisture up there. Oh right, yeah, sure. And it's the moisture that we need. To pressurise our bodies. Well, yeah, that, this is our view. Well, it ha- always has been our view. Yeah. You know, we don't breathe in oxygen from the air. What we absorb from the air is moisture. moisture. Yeah. And that moisture helps pressurise our bodies through the lungs. Yeah. Because that's what, that, that's the function of the lungs. That's what we think the, the function of the lungs is, to pressurise the bodies with moisture. So that it gives us form. We can move around. And all this... Yeah, basically, yeah. But, uh, you know, um, but according to this uh, document, they didn't find any, any benefit of breathing in oxygen. Sure. Especially the two people who died. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know anyone's uh, quite happy to uh, read this if they want to. Yeah, anyway, so go you back know, on the... Uh, there you go. Read, read at the afternoon meeting of the Society, the 10th of November 1924. There you go, clear off then. So we can click that off. So thank you ever so much, people. Well done. Major R J W. And then we've done that one, then haven't we? Yeah, we have. Done, Looks yeah. like we've done it all. Yeah, yeah. So you know, so you know, in our opinion, there's no oxygen in the air, and some people are just plain stupid to think there is because they lack the. They I think they lack the critical think thinking ability to be able to know what the real world is. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. You know, and not live in this dream world that's created by human beings. Yeah. Man's society, a little dream world, you know. Where people are expected to uh, give praise to those who help others. Who help others. And, you know, only at Christmas time, though. Yeah. Only at Christmas time. Any other time, we won't bother. But but at Christmas time, when 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 there's no money being made, Oh right! Yeah. Really, we, we you can then help. Then you can consider other people who help oh, right, others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when there's money to be made, no, we'll put those to one side. Sorry, yeah, we'll leave that for another. Yeah, because we we all live in a capitalist society, and we're there to make money. Absolutely, we put money first before people. people. Yeah, people we couldn't care about. Them. People we yeah. want to make money. Yeah, money's important for us. Yeah, of course. Kind of, Anyway, so that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so there you go. You know, I mean, great wealth of information that we've uh, presented everyone on Boxing Day, and uh, you know, let us know what you think. If you think there's oxygen as a constituent of the air, tell us why you think you're mad. Let us know that yeah. you're mad, and you let, us, let us know why you think it is. When there's so much of out, when there's so much information out there that says that it's not very good for you, and it isn't there. 
Oh, right, well, yeah. And don't forget that oximeter that you place on your finger. You're only measuring the amount of light that can pass through your finger. Absolutely, of it's course. Not measuring yes. oxygen. Absolutely. And always remember when you have you when you use your oxygen sensor, yeah, you've got to calibrate it. You've got to tell the device there is oxygen in the air. Twenty one percent. Twenty one percent, absolutely of course, yes. So you know, so there you have it. So always remember till next time if something doesn't make sense. Like thinking there's oxygen as a constituent of the air. Yeah. Thinking that oxygen is is, is, is given to all these footballers and all these athletes all the time it improves their performance yeah or even thinking that oxygen reacts with metals to form oxides oh right yeah and to think mm. that when you make an acid like sulfuric acid it doesn't absorb a lot of oxygen absolutely of course yeah yeah i mean it's all it's all bollocks isn't it of course yeah. all rubbish so thanks ever so much and see you next time see you next time okay bye tell the Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.